During a viral infection, the virus attaches itself to a human cell using its spikes. Following entry to the cell, it uses the host cell's machinery to replicate, producing viral proteins and genetic material. These are then assembled into new viral particles, which are released as the host cell dies. New viral particles again infect more cells, destroying body tissues, producing symptoms. Infected cells alert the immune system by displaying pieces of viral proteins on their surface. By doing so, infected cells are said to present the viral antigen to certain immune cells, namely cytotoxic T cells, and thus activate them. At the same time, debris of dead cells and viral particles themselves are picked up by so called professional antigen presenting cells, of which dendritic cells are most effective. Dendritic cells patrol body tissues, continuously sampling their environment for intruders. After capturing the antigen, dendritic cells quickly leave the tissue for the nearest lymph node, where they present the antigen to another group of immune cells known as helper T cells. Viral particles also activate B cells in lymph nodes. These groups of immune cells work together to mount two types of immunity specific to the viral antigen, cell-mediated immunity and antibody-mediated immunity. The process, however, may take up to a couple of weeks, during which time the person is sick and the virus will have destroyed a vast number of cells. Vaccines deliver viral antigens to trigger immune responses without causing the disease. The events of a vaccine-induced immune response are similar to that induced by a natural infection, although some types of vaccines may induce only antibody-mediated immunity and may therefore be less effective. The immune process can sometimes produce symptoms similar to a mild infection, even though there is none. As the lymph nodes near the injection site start producing antibodies, they may become swollen and tender for a few days. These are signs that the vaccine is working. Many existing vaccines contain a weakened or inactivated virus. Because the whole virus is used, these vaccines require extensive safety testing. Attenuated vaccines may still cause disease in people with compromised immune systems. Inactivated vaccines only induce antibody-mediated immunity. Subunit vaccines contain only part of the virus, usually a spike protein. These vaccines cannot cause disease, but they may not be seen as a threat to the immune system and therefore may not elicit the desired immune response. For this reason, certain substances, called adjuvants, are usually added to stimulate the antigen-presenting cells to pick up the vaccine. A subunit vaccine may also consist of empty virus shells without genetic material. Having a typical size and shape of a pathogen, these vaccines may not require adjuvants to be perceived as danger, but they can be difficult to produce. Nucleic acid vaccines contain genetic information for making the viral antigen instead of the antigen itself. DNA vaccines introduce viral DNA into the cell's nucleus, where it is transcribed into mRNA. The mRNA is translated into viral spike protein in the cytoplasm. The protein is then displayed on the cell's surface, just like with other types of vaccines. Naked DNA vaccines require a special delivery method to reach the cell's nucleus. Alternatively, a harmless, unrelated virus may be used as a vehicle to deliver the DNA. In this case, the vaccine is also known as a viral vector vaccine. For example, the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine uses a chimpanzee adenovirus as a vector. The adenoviral genome is modified to remove viral genes, and the coronavirus spike gene is added. This way, the viral vector cannot replicate or cause disease, but it acts as a vehicle to deliver the DNA. The reason a non-human adenovirus is used is because most people may have been exposed to human adenovirus and have immunity against it. The immunity could destroy the vehicle before it can deliver the DNA and thus blunt the vaccine's effectiveness.
DNA vaccines have raised concerns about the possibility of viral DNA integration into human genome. However, studies in animal models have shown that integration frequency is well below the frequency of natural, spontaneous gene mutations. mRNA vaccines introduce mRNA that contains information for making the viral protein. mRNA molecules are delivered within a lipid covering that will fuse with the cell membrane. Once inside the cytoplasm, the mRNA is translated into viral antigen, which is then displayed on the cell surface. Unlike DNA vaccines, mRNA vaccines are extremely unlikely to integrate into human genome, but they are fragile and require uninterrupted cold chain for transportation and storage.